Hi and welcome to Word in Season. Let me read to you one verse of scripture from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort. God is the God of all comfort. And when I think about God's comfort, I'm reminded of a great old hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus. Let me read to you the first verse of that hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. I'm always uh, encouraged when I sing this hymn, which I thankfully get to do quite regularly. It has become such a precious and very powerful hymn to me. So what is comfort? What do we exactly mean when we talk about comfort? Well, comfort is encouragement, whether by words or the presence of another to help in time of need. Similar words to comfort are to console, to help, to bring relief, to cheer up, exhort and to allay someone else's fears. Comfort's a wonderful gift. It's something we all need and long for. We are thankful for loving parents, family and others who provided comfort to us, particularly when we were younger. We are thankful to the community of God's people who are great vessels of God's comfort and a host and to a host of other people too throughout our lives who comforted us when we needed it. But sometimes, and it may be just for a season, those external comforts seem to escape us and we are left ultimately all alone, but never without God. I think there are times in life when it's only God's comfort that can really deep down meet us. Strangely, from my experience over many decades now, God can allow this sense of aloneness for the express purpose that we may come face to face with him and indeed meet him the God of all comfort. I'm aware, particularly in my own life as a child growing up, when there were times when I felt very alone, anxious and afraid, and there was often no human comfort. As I reflect now, I'm aware of how I profoundly experienced the sense of comfort and peace that I recognise now was from God, how thankful I was to have been comforted by him. Not only is the God the God of all comfort, but he is able to sympathise with us in our weaknesses. How good that is. That's a great comfort also. Hebrews 4 says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathise with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Jesus endured uh, through many griefs and sorrows through his life, too many for me to mention now. But I find it is a great comfort to know that he has walked where you and I walk. He walked in our shoes. He took on our skin. We have a God who gets our sorrows and sufferings because he has been there, done that, and indeed worn the t-shirt. He sympathizes with us in our struggles for he himself experienced similarly and worse. He is in solidarity with us. He feels for us. He listens to us. He gets our struggles and gives aid in testing times. As we consider God's comfort, let's remind ourselves of the Lord's compassions. Compassion is at the core of the heart of God. References to God's compassion abound in the Bible. Let me read a verse to you from the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion. Blessed are all those who wait for him. And in Psalm 103, it says, verse 14, he knows our frame. We sing a great old hymn. It says, well, our feeble frame he knows. Wonderful comfort. Innumerable times in his ministry, Jesus was moved with compassion on the people and performed many healings and miracles too. 
In Matthew's Gospel we read, Jesus saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. Let me share one of my favourite Bible verses with you from Psalm 34 verse 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And isn't that good to know? Jesus, the Bible tells us, is the same yesterday, today and forever. Yet that same Jesus we read about yesterday is the same Jesus today and of course forever. Let me encourage you as I encourage myself to lean into his comfort, his empathy and his compassion, which are bound in the heart of Jesus, our gentle and lowly Saviour. I'd like to close by uh, reading the words of the second verse of the hymn I read earlier. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. What a friend we really do have in Jesus. Church, have a great week.